My name is Gabe Philippe. I'm Senior Director of California Sourcing and Farming for Mission Produce. Uh, we are a, a global packer shipper, the largest in the world. Uh, we have distribution centers around the U.S. and uh, packing houses uh, around, the, around the globe. Uh, this operation here is a joint venture with Cal Poly State University. It's a long-term partnership that we went into with Cal Poly. Uh, it's been a very successful operation. We've managed to sustain yields of around 18,000 pounds per acre here, year in, year out. Um, and I'll let Blake introduce himself. Hi, I'm Blake Petrucci. I'm the regional farm manager for Mission Produce in San Luis Obispo County. So I manage three different ranches, one here in San Luis Obispo and two a little bit farther north in Cayucas, totaling about 170 acres. And I manage the day-to-day -day operations of all the uh, duties that involve our farming practice here. A lot of growers come to us and ask us, you know, what, what's the correct way to prune? And usually what we tell them is, you know, just to prune something every year. Uh, what we try to do is maintain our tree heights to 80% of the row width. So if we have a 20 foot row, we like the trees to be no taller than um, 16 foot uh, roughly. So a lot of times that means we have to prune down to 12 foot and then the trees regrow to about 16. Yeah, ideally we prune 15 to 20 percent of the tree's canopy on any given year and we like to um, manipulate a different portion of the tree every year and within our groves we we do a mix of different pruning within certain blocks so we might take 10 percent of the grove and and thin out th the number of trees so in this case we're, we're standing next to a, a tree that was removed about two years ago um, so we've actually reduced the density from, uh, this was 16 by 20, 16 foot in between the trees, 20 foot in between the rows. We've actually reduced the density from 136 trees to, to half of that. In older groves, uh, we might choose to, to thin out or remove every other tree on 10% of the total acreage within a ranch. And then on 40% of, of the acreage, we might aggressively top the trees. And then on the other 50%, we might re remove a quadrant or take out a, a center limb uh, within the trees. So if, if we go in and do a, a variety of different pruning within the grove, the next year we do something totally different. So if, if we topped uh, a tree the previous year, then we will just remove a, a limb. If, uh, if we removed every other tree within a grove, then we'll uh, then we'll go in that, that following year and actually top that section. So every year we're manipulating a different portion of, of, the, of the tree. That's allowing us to mitigate the alternate bearing tendencies of the avocado. It's allow, allowing us to produce budwood um, on certain trees for two years out, produce aggressive budwood. So the trees that we top this year, they're really gonna come on uh, heavy two years from now. So, what we're noticing is, is by pruning with this strategy, we always have a, a block within the grove that, that has you know, 25, 20 to 30,000 pounds per acre on it. And then we'll have other sections that might have 5,000 pounds per acre. The sections that we, we topped aggressively the previous year will have a light crop the following year. And then the, the sections where we removed one branch, uh, they might have 10 to 12,000 pounds to the acre on it. So, once you sum all of those, the, the combination of different pruning techniques up, we end up with somewhere close to 18,000 pounds to the acre year in, year out here. So ultimately we prune to increase our fruit set and our fruit size on each of the trees, um, whether it's that year or the year after or two years out. Um, and that increased fruit set and fruit size comes by way of light penetration all the way through to the floor of the grove. So when we cut out parts of the tree, we're getting more light into each individual tree as well as down to other trees along the base of them. And that's gonna allow more flowering to happen on all sides of the tree, um, which in turn will have a greater fruit set. Um, this also gives us the ability to grow fresh, aggressive budwood, and um, which in turn will flower the year after and bring light into trees that are otherwise older or shaded out that can benefit from that rejuvenation of more light, more photosynthesis, more activity. We also prune to reduce water demand in some cases. If, if it's a short water year and, and we need to cut back, then, then we prune more aggressively to, to reduce tree demand. 
We also prune to, to obviously lower tree heights so it's cheaper to, to harvest. And in addition, you know, you're not bringing big ladders into the grove, so you're reducing your liability within the grove also. Um, as Blake mentioned, we, we prune to increase the surface area. So a lot of, in a lot of groves, older groves, uh, you see the trees canopy out and all the fruit is at the very top of the tree. Uh, when the, the strong winds come, uh, a lot of that fruit gets blown off. So we like to have uh, layers of fruit on the sides and the center of the tree, so on the tops of the tree, all the way around, so that when those, those strong winds come, the trees actually protect themselves and, and can keep more of the fruit that they set every year. As far as the, the costs associated with pruning, the pruning costs can vary dramatically depending on the type of, of pruning that you're doing and the age of the trees. Uh, when the trees are young, you know, you're going to do very minimal pruning, oftentimes just tipping, maybe, maybe opening up the, the center of the tree to make it look like a, an open vase, but very minimal pruning the first three years or so, uh, and that, the cost is very low for that. So in general, I would say pruning costs can run anywhere from $200 an acre up to you know, $3,000 an acre or, or, or more if you're completely removing sections or, or stumping trees back to you know, four to six feet tall, that, that's where it gets costly. But on average, we're probably spending somewhere in the realm of uh, $650 an acre on pruning doing the, the variety of different technique, techniques that we have within the grove. So all of our pruning is done by hand um, with, with manual labor. Um, that's done, the majority of the work is done with pole saws, which are long chainsaws um, to get into some of these trees that are normally bigger. We also utilize some smaller hand chainsaws that can be operated with one hand, um, as well as manual pole pruners, which use a chain and a blade. Um, but like I said, overall we use, we use pole saws, mo uh, motorized chainsaws to do the majority of the work. The small saws come in handy for smaller trees. Say you have smaller, younger trees and you're removing a, a center limb that may be down at waist level, it would be a little cumbersome to bring a longer pole saw in, in that case. One of the reasons we like to use the mechanical power pruners is because it allows us to do all the work from the ground. We don't have to bring ladders in and have guys with chainsaws up on ladders so they can reach up you know, 12 foot, no problem with a mechanical power pruner and, and top the trees. Uh, those, those pruners can cut, you know, trees that are eight inches in, that, in diameter, no problem. So that's the, the method that we prefer. For larger cuts, say we are taking a large center, rim, center limb out of the middle of the tree or a, or a large quadrant, say a six or greater uh, inch diameter limb, um, it's often necessary to undercut the bottom of that limb so that or cut make multiple incremental cuts starting from the top so as not to rip off and strip a large piece of bark from the tree when that limb comes falling down after the majority of the cut is made and so that's just common chainsaw practice and good practice for that if we had flat terrain and um, you know a, a grove that was opened up then, then we would look to, to mechanical pruning. The only downside to that is a lot of times you're still going in there with manual labor, making additional cuts, and you still have to pull that brush out manually. So um, it is cheaper to make the, the initial cuts mechanically, but in the long run, it, it's the, the total cost is you're not probably saving much by going mechanically. We like to prune between the months of February through April. Um, by pruning at those times, we're, we're allowing um, the fruit to be marketed. So at that point, all sizes are released. So we can start in February and, and pick a tree and then and cut those branches off and actually market that fruit, which will in turn pay for the, the pruning practice itself. Uh, another reason we like to prune at that time is it's, it's before the, the tree setting fruit. Um, and it's early on in the season so that if we open a tree up, uh, we're going to get uh, sunlight into the center of the tree to allow budwood creation that season. So if you if you delay and and prune in in midsummer, then you're then you're losing that opportunity to create that budwood um, in the middle of the tree for for that year. Uh, another reason why we like to prune February, March, April. I mean, ideally it'd be March and April in my opinion. Is we've noticed that if your grove is susceptible to frost damage 
then um, the trees that we've pruned in the winter time get hit harder um, than the, the trees that uh, were, were unpruned or left untouched. So um, that's another reason why we wait, like to wait until say March 15th in most areas, the, the frost threat is over with by that time and, and we get going. One other practice that is um, kind of controversial given that a lot of a lot of people are pitching high density groves um, we're actually we're, we're not opposed to that we feel that planting high density will get you into max production uh, a couple years earlier versus planting at a more standard density but a lot of growers i th i think are taking a, an approach where they're they're not going the standard 109 tree to the acre density they're not doing 400 trees to the acre but maybe they they plant somewhere around 200 trees to the acre and like with this grove, um, and I think with any grove, if you plant high density in California, given the tools that we have, um, you, you need to have it in your plan to, to remove trees. You know, if, if you're planting 400 trees to the acre, in, in my opinion, you're probably gonna need to remove um, some of those trees at about year five or six. If you plant 150 trees to the acre, you, you might wanna start thinking about removing trees Year, year 10 or 12. So that's kind of where, where this grove stands. Uh, we've, we've picked out certain areas, um, maybe our tightest areas or most, most canopied areas, and we've started in those sections and have gradually removed about 10% of the grove uh, year by year. Um, and eventually the entire grove will be half the density uh, within the next five years uh, to what we planted uh, the trees in, in 2003. We feel that the, the benefits of pruning outweigh the risks, so there's always a chance that we can transfer um, disease such as uh, sun blotch disease from one tree to the, to the next. If, if we know that we have sun blotch within the groves, then we're sanitizing our equipment in between trees. But all in all, we, we feel that the benefits of pruning uh, outweigh the risks.